Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be discussing masks. Masks allow us to limit the effects of a module to certain parts of an image and they allow us as well to determine how strong the effect of the module will be on that part of the image. You can use masks with uh, almost all modules in Darktable. The notable exception is white balance. We're going to use the exposure module. You can enable masks in this bar here. The first one takes the masks off, so no masks. The second one is called uniformly. And this allows you to change the blend mode and the opacity of the module. By default, each module in Darktable takes the pixels from the previous module, works on it, does whatever you've added in the module, and then hands out the pixels to the next module. However, we have options in the blend module to recombine the output of the module with its input and create a different effect. I'm going to increase the exposure. And as you can see, the effect of the module is now on all of the image and the blend mode is normal. The opacity slider here allows me to affect the intensity of the module on the images that are in scope. Well, here it's the whole image. If I pull it down, as you can see, the extra exposure compensation that I added to the image is being reduced. Of course you can use all the normal methods to manipulate the slider. I can type in a percentage and so on and so forth. As for the blend modes, we've already discussed them in previous videos. You can refer to those if you want. But since version 3.2, I think, they're now categorized by what they do. And you can scroll through them to see the effect. That they give the image. They don't make a lot of sense with the exposure module, but there are other modules where a different blend mode would be uh, useful. Next we have the drone mask and it's like it says on the box. It's a mask that you can draw on the image to select the area that will be affected. Notice that you always have the blend mode and the opacity. You just get extra options with different menus on the tab. We can add shapes using these icons here or if we've already used masks in the image we would be able to select it from the drop down menu here. As masks selected in one um, module will be saved and you'll be allowed to use them in other modules. This is quite helpful if you're trying to do a series of manipulation on the same area in the image. The first one is a brush. You can use the mouse wheel to increase the area. If you're unfamiliar with how to uh, increase or decrease uh, the brush and uh, the feathering around it, uh, then please refer to the dark room concept uh, video. To select an area, I just click and drag. There you go. That's the selected area. And as you can see, the module is now only affecting the area that I've selected. You can select the nodes here and edit the area if needed. You can click on this arrow here to hide the mask so that you can better 
see its effect you can click on it again to show it and edit it and as well you can click on this button here to display the mask in yellow and allows you to see better which areas you are affecting the next shape is a circle notice now it's added I can still move it I can change its size by hovering over it the one after is an ellipse this one has more nodes and allows you to change the shape of the ellipse and the one after is a free path that you can create by clicking and creating nodes and then right clicking to finish as you can see they're all added and create a single area that's affected by the exposure module if I hide them then they all disappear at the same time and showing the mask will let us have a look at the areas that are affected all at the same time as well you can right click on a shape to delete it and if you wanted to add multiple shapes of the same type then you can press control on your keyboard and then select the shape and then once you click on it you still be have the same shape on the mouse pointer and you can add as many as you want to exit you just click on another shape we can as well see them and you can edit them separately after the fact even if you wanted to add shapes of different sizes it's a good idea to add them all at once and then you can edit them separately to your heart's desire let's add a shape here and see if we can use it in another module as well there you go now we have a shape still have all the previous ones that I deleted as well and I can go to the tone equalizer for instance select here and then I will have that shape here that I can use if I wanted to if I delete it from here it will not be deleted from all modules as you can see all the previous ones are still here as well just in case you need them for anything else all of the shapes that you've created are in the mask manager you can delete them from here or you can directly click on them to use them in your image you can as well rename them to give them a more useful name say foreground now if I wanted to use this shape in other modules I can refer to the name that I've given it here you can as well create the shapes directly here before you start using them in modules the right click menu allows you to duplicate shapes delete shapes and clean up unused shapes so any shape that's in the mask manager but is not used in a module will be deleted if you do that but you could delete shapes as well one by one if you're not using them you can as well select multiple shapes by using shift 
and right click you can delete them all together but you can as well group them and create a group can rename the group and say uh, give it something useful and this allows you to select the shapes all together from the module by selecting the name of the group that you've created Deleting all shapes from a group will delete the group. Can add multiple shapes directly here. And that automatically created a group for me here. It's called group exposure. We can as well change how these shapes interact with each other. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to delete those and keep two, and then I'm going to put them above each other. Now, if I expand the exposure group here, I can right click on a circle and then change the mode so if I use the mode intersection, let's highlight the mask. The mask becomes the intersection of the two shapes. If I change it to difference, it becomes the difference between the two shapes. Then you have exclusion and the default is union. You can as well use inverted shape which makes the shape that we've just selected a negative if you want. So instead of selecting inside the shape, it selects everything outside of the shape. And then again, you can use all of the other modes with the inverted shape, if you so wish. The last one is a gradient and gradient allows us to define that line that we're going to add is where the mask will be at 50% let's show it and under it it will go gradually towards 0 above it it will go gradually towards 100 we can still move it and we can rotate it. You can curve it as well by using the mouse wheel close to the line and of course in both directions. This is helpful if for instance you wanted to exclude some part of the sky Suppose we had a building here, a bigger building, and you just wanted to select the sky. You could have to, you could do that with a curved gradient. Now you have here two ways of inverting the mask. The one that we've already used would toggle the polarity of the drone mask. You can change the invert mask here. And as far as I can tell, it has the same effect. Of course, if you apply the, if you toggle the polarity on one shape, but not the rest, and you can do that from the task manager, then it would have a different effect than you if you invert the whole mask. If you use this one, you're inverting for all of the shapes. As far as I can tell, this one as well works on all of the shapes here, but you could use the same from the mask manager and just reverse the polarity of a single shape. Next, we have the mask refinement. First, you have feathering, and feathering smooths the mask. 
in a way that the mask's edges automatically align with the edges or features of the image, if they are around the same area. Uh, let's select something else than a gradient to see if we can fix that. I'm going to select the lighthouse and as you can see now it's a huge selection but by using the feathering I'm going to try to limit the mask to the edges of the lighthouse for that we have four sliders the first one is the feathering radius which you can think of as the strength of the feathering next we have the mask blur which smooths the transition between the mask and the unmasked areas then we have the opacity which is the strength of the module through that mask and then we have the mask contrast which is the transition between the opaque and transparent images of the mask so let's try First I'm going to increase the radius and it's already getting better. Let's see if I can change the contrast. There you go. Then I'm going to use the mask blur and you can try to adjust those sliders until you get the results that you want and now as you can see I managed to limit the mask to more or less just the lighthouse the last button we have here which is next to the display mask button allows you to temporarily switch off the blended masks but only for this module For time's sake and to keep the length of this video manageable, we'll stop here this time and we'll continue in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, corrections or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.